that's uh, one of the hard parts of being a pastor is you see what's going on in people's lives. You, you hear what's going on in people's lives. And you know that they have access to the Word of God. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating a voice, an audible voice of God. The Bible just has a discrepancy against that. But what I'm talking about is you have the voice of God right here at the tips of your hands. And I see marriages falling apart. You know, financial stability will not bring you peace. It will not bring you joy. Only focusing on what the Lord has for your lives. That's as individuals, that's as husbands, as wives, as mothers, as fathers. You have to listen to what the Word of God says. Otherwise, you are going to crash and burn. <coughs> and one day, no matter what decision you make, the Bible is very clear. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But see, it's too late then. It's too late. The crash has happened. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no day like today. But we're going to look at the Word in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. And we're going to talk about in remembrance. So in preparing for the Lord's Supper, I want you to remember. And, and, and you know, there, there's... You'll you hear different things about the Lord's Supper. I, I've heard closed communion, which we are not. I've, ho I've heard close communion, which we are not. But the Lord's Supper is what we are going to discuss today. He is the original. He is the only true, holy, and just blood donor. His blood type is a match for all who are willing to accept it. It is, it is the, the life giving, the life healing, the life saving, a powerful agent. His blood is. He's the only way. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Starting verse 22, the Bible says, And almost all things by, are, are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. You know, I hear people say, well, me and God, we got our own thing. You know, I don't go to church or I don't do these things. And again, I encourage you to listen to and obey the voice of God, the Word of God. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures or replicas of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then he must often have been suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world that he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment, the unavoidable judgment. Verse 28, so Christ once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Chapter 10, verse 10. The Word of God says, By thee which will we are satis sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verse 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which He hath consecrated for us, it is finished, through the veil that is to say His flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 
Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. He says, go to church, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more as you see the day approaching. There's no greater symbol of life than blood. Jesus Christ shed His blood, gave His life for our sins so that we don't have to experience spiritual death, eternal separation from God. Jesus Christ is the absolute and the only source of eternal life. The most valuable of all treasures is the Lord's redemption. Have you chosen to receive the Lord's redemption? If you will turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 through 7. And I encourage you to read that whole chapter for the sake of time. Verse 4 through 7. Surely or absolutely, He, Jesus, has borne our griefs, past and present, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem or admire Him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Mankind enjoyed his punishment. Some still do today. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, all of our sins. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He, Jesus, was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before his shears as dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Willingly he did this for our transgressions. John chapter 15 and verse 13. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. If you would, look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. The Bible says, to the praise of the glory of grace, wherein He hath made us accepted, in the beloved in whom in Jesus we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace according to not based upon but according to verse 8 wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence he has abounded towards us verse 9 having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good, good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Because of Christ, our personal relationship with him, we are accepted, we are redeemed. Grace is God's worthy, excuse me, voluntary and loving favor given to those who are saved, yet not worthy, yet don't deserve it. But he loves us so much that he does it anyway. He's ours. If we're His, you would turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 10 through 14. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, as we should be, and increasing in the knowledge of God, we must dig in. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet or qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom, in Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood even 
the forgiveness of our sins. If you would look at Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. The Word of God says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, our sins, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Now again, as we prepare, I want you to think about these scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 through 32. If you've never taken a day serious in the church, I hope and I pray that today as we do this in remembrance, you will take serious the Word of God and the consequences of not doing so. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 through 32. The Bible says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till He come. That's in remembrance. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What does that mean, Brother Jason? That means you're sitting here today and you know you have sin in your life. Yet you partake of the Lord's Supper. And you're unwilling to ask for forgiveness for that sin. You are taking of the Lord's Supper unworthily. You are here today and you are not saved. And you refuse to call upon the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You are partaking in the Lord's Supper unworthily. But there's no reason to stay that way today. Again, where, where, wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, unsaved, or unconfessed sin, known sin, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. We need to be real with ourselves. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. He chastens us out of absolute love. We should take the Lord's Supper thoughtfully because we're proclaiming that Christ died for our sins. We should take it worthily with due reverence and respect. We should examine ourselves for any unconfessed sin or, or ungodly attitude or resentfulness. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 that if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, I, I say often, if is one of the deepest, widest, broadest words in the Scripture. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, every bit of it. If you're here today and you have caught up in sin, you can be forgiven of that today. We are to be prepared and ready based on our personal belief in Christ, our dependence on Him, our trust in Him. Consider the meaning. In reality, no one is worthy but Jesus. We're all sinners saved by grace. If He is ours, then we are His and we are made righteous through Him. This is why we should approach communion very seriously with a healthy spiritual introspection Confession of sin. Resolution of differences. These actions remove barriers to our relationships with Christ and our relationships with one another and other believers. Awareness of your sin should not keep you away from communion, but rather it should drive you to it. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 40. The Bible says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. So I ask that you take this opportunity to repent, to turn from your sins and to Christ. So before we partake in the Lord's Supper, if you would please stand and Brother William is going to offer a song of invitation for you to have an opportunity to respond. You can come to these altars or you can stand and pray where you are. You can sit and pray where you are. But I encourage you that you give your heart and you give your life right with Christ today before you partake in the Lord's Supper.